The best part about Monday is looking forward to Wednesday. Let's see which books are on the pull list this week. Welcome back to Comics Are Dope. I'm BJ Kicks, and this is The Pull List. It's my weekly video series where I take a look at all the books coming out. This time we're looking at Wednesday, July 24th, 2024. I'm going to tell you which books are on my pull list, what's on the chopping block, meaning it's in danger of getting cut from the pull list, and we'll talk about some new number ones that should probably be on your radar. This week is stacked, and it's particularly stacked with the indies, the smaller publishers, the non-big two. So we're going to start off with the book that I am most excited about, and this week that is Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles issue number one, written by Jason Aaron with art by Joel Jones. This is the first issue in a brand new jumping on point for the Ninja Turtles. Now, after the events of issue 150, the brothers are scattered. They're all over the place. And over the course of this first four issues, we're going to figure out just where they all are. They're going to find each other. And I guess we'll have the full team together by issue five is my assumption. Uh, thanks to IDW, I did get a chance to read an early copy of this issue. And even though I've already read it, it is still the most exciting thing on the pull list this week. I cannot wait to see that Joel Jones artwork without those watermarks. This book is good. Raphael finds himself in prison. Why is he in prison? Well, you'll find out by reading it. And uh, when someone decides to bring the fight to the prison, the stakes just get really, really high. Listen, I've been buying Ninja Turtles since I've been in comics like from issue 101 all the way up until now through the Armageddon game and all the other things. This is the most excited I've been about Ninja Turtles since I started buying comics. And that's honestly a high bar because IDW's had pretty high quality all the way around with some dips here and there, depending on your action preferences. Jason Aaron's voice for Raphael is really, really good. I love just uh, how he's describing sort of the superpowers that Raphael has, the heightened senses and the strategy where Raphael is known to be all rage. He's thinking in this issue and I like it. I like it a lot. I cannot wait to get the spotlights for the rest of the brothers because this one is really, really well done. But look, I don't want to spoil anything. So I'm going to stop talking about this book. TM TMNT issue number one. Like I said, Jason Aaron, Joel Jones, uh, it's a different artist for each of these first four issues. Definitely pre-order this at your local comic shop. This book got like over 300,000 pre-orders. There is a guarantee. I would probably guarantee that there's going to be a copy of this at your shop. And there are a ton of variant covers to choose from. You can't really go wrong. But my personal favorite is the Kari Randolph cover, and that's the one I pre-ordered for a cover price of $4.99. Now, since we started off with indies, like I said, it's a stacked week for the indies. So we're going to keep it going with this one from Mad Cave Studios. This is Dick Tracy, issue number three. Uh, Dick Tracy, I know the arts by Geraldo Borges. I think the book is written by Alex Seguro and Segura and Michael Morisi. This book is good. It's just a straight up detective story is set like in the late 40s, early 50s. I don't really know which which of these decades, but we're talking about like after World War Two. And it's been really, really good. There's like some gangs, some mobs. There's some activity going on. A police officer has been killed. A mobster has been killed. And we're trying to figure out why. Excuse me. A mobster and a reporter have been killed. And we're trying to figure out why. And so far, the only lead in the case just turned up dead. What's Dick Tracy going to do and how are these mobsters going to respond to each other? I'm really enjoying this series. The art is awesome. I love a good noir story, and that's exactly what this is. Cover price on it is four ninety nine. I'm grabbing cover A. Next up uh, from Image Comics is Feral, issue number five. Feral written by... Uh, Tony Fleeks with art by Trish Forstner. This um, is the latest in the series, uh, this sort of spiritual successor to Stray Dogs. We had Stray Dogs, now we have Feral Cats. This book is basically a zombie book, but switch out zombies for rabid animals, not just cats, 
but dogs and all sorts of creatures are rabid. And this kind of, this comes out at the same time as another book that comes on this pull list uh, this in this issue or this week. And of the two Tony Fleek's books, I feel like Uncanny Valley is the runaway favorite, but this book, especially with the last issue, really kind of ratcheted things up. Uh, the, the house cats are not used to being out in the wild and they got to, you know, sort of learn how to adapt to the wild, learn not to trust people. And uh, speaking of not trusting people, there was a revelation in issue four. That I don't know how we're coming back from. So we'll see how it goes. Really enjoying this series. Cur cover price on it is $3.99. I'm grabbing cover A. And next up, also from Mad Cave Studios, who is celebrating their 10th anniversary this year by just throwing out hit after hit after hit. Flash Gordon issue number one is out this week. It's written by Jeremy Adams. Uh, Flash Gordon, uh, who is the artist? Because the art's really good. I want to take time to shout out the artist. All right. Art on Flash Gordon is by Will Conrad. Really, really good. If you read the free comic book day issue, you know how good it is. If you didn't read the free comic book day issue, Mad Cave Studios has it listed on their website. So you can just pull up the PDF. But Flash Gordon is kind of the quintessential action hero, adventure hero. Even if all you know about him is the fact that he was in Ted, which is all I knew about him up until I read that Zero issue. It's a compelling and captivating story. I think Jeremy Adams is going to do a great job reintroducing this action adventure hero to a new generation. And the art by Will Conrad certainly does not hurt that effort. I am very excited to see what we get out of issue one um, and how it picks up from the events of that zero issue. You need to read the zero issue. I don't want to spoil it. Cover price on this one is $4.99. I'm grabbing cover A. Next up uh, from Rom V is The Six Fingers, issue number five. Actually, this is by Dan Waters. But The Six Fingers goes with the one hand. Uh, and these are sisters, sister stories, one telling from one perspective, one telling from another. There's a serial killer going around. There's a detective trying to solve the murders and put away the the one, you know, sort of case that got away. I kind of fell off this series with issue three of each, respectively. And just because I kind of got lost in a stack of books on the pull list, I should have waited for a trade paperback like I said I was going to at the beginning, but I didn't. And here we are. But the one hand number five came out like a month ago. Now the six fingers number five completes the series. If you did not get in on this in singles, I would recommend that you pick it up in trade paperback whenever that is solicited. Cover price on this series finale is $3.99. I'm grabbing cover A. I just realized I left one out. So next up on the list is Uncanny Valley. Issue number four, written by Tony Fleece with art by Dave Wachter. This is probably my favorite indie series right now. I don't know. It's between that one and the next one on this list, but I'll give it to this one since it's ongoing for now. But Uncanny Valley, issue number four. Uh, Uncanny Valley is about this kid named Oliver who finds out that he's part cartoon. And so he has these abilities that regular humans don't have. And he's also discovering just how real the world of cartoons is. Uh, it turns out he is being hunted by some, let's call them dastardly cartoons. And in the last issue, we kind of learned that there's another big bad, like we don't know why he's on the run and we're finding out slowly why he's on the run or why he's being chased or what have you. But I'm trying to figure out what role the grandfather plays in it because it sounded like he might play a role and his mom's got to come save the day. So we'll see how it goes. But Uncanny Valley, I'm loving, loving, loving this series. You will too. Issue four is out this week. Cover price on it is $4.99. I'm grabbing cover A. And... The final book on my indie pull list this week, also from Mad Cave Studios. Man, they might be making a run at Publisher of the Year, but When the Blood Has Dried, number four, is out this week. Uh, written by Gary Maloney, art by, he's going to kill me. <laughs> art by Daniel Romero. I kept wanting to say Daniel Samper, and I knew that wasn't the case. But When the Blood Has Dried is a sort of, high fantasy spaghetti western kind of mashup this girl meeb used to be a part of um let's just call them a band a, a band of merry men if you will maybe they weren't so merry she turned her back 
on the guild, as they're called. And uh, suddenly, you know, the guy who tried to punish her way back in the past catches up with her. And um, let's just say things aren't going pretty. She's been challenged to a series of games to determine, like, how things are going to go in this new town she's settled in. And, um, well, she's back with a vengeance, but things, the stakes are high and uh, she's got to find her sort of inner strength. Uh, I actually got sent an early copy of this and I didn't read it because I wanted to read it along with you guys. Uh, my man Gary says that there's a moment in issue four that is completely inspired by Gohan's Super Saiyan 2 transformation during the Cell games. And I was like, I gotta see that. But I wanted to wait till this week. So I didn't read it, so I couldn't spoil it for you. Cover price on this issue is $4.99. I'm really excited about grabbing the cover A. Only one cover for that series, by the way. But that is it for the indie books on the pull list this week. As long as I stick to the list, those will cost me $33. And Man, that's a lot of indies. And let me just shout out the fact that none of those are crazy overpriced. I guess $4.99 is the new price floor, but I'm very excited that TMNT is not like an $8 book. Really cool stuff. Anyway, let's skip over to DC Comics where there's only one book on the pull list, and that is Detective Comics issue 1087. Uh, Rom V's run on Detective is closing at issue 1089. We're getting a whole new creative team with issue 1090, and that team is Tom Taylor and Mikkel Hanin, which is exciting. I think the Rom V era is going to be remembered very well. I think what sort of hurts it, if we're calling it that, is the fact that it's such long form storytelling. It very much reads better in trade paperback, but in my opinion, it's going to be an amazing, an amazing omnibus, and I think it's probably head and shoulders above the Mariko Tamaki run before it and the uh, the Peter Tomasi run before that. Peter Tomasi was kind of in and out adventures. This is very much long form storytelling, um, and it's perhaps the best since the Rebirth run by James Tynan. I think the degree to which you enjoy it is the degree, the degree to which you enjoy seeing a huge team up book versus like a really personal Bruce Wayne Batman story. Very, very good. Uh, I give it high marks, even though I'm like two issues behind. It's been a good series and I'm going to be sad to see it go, but I'm going to be happy to be able to read it all together. I feel like you're going to get a lot out of it. Anyway, uh, Detective Comics issue 1087. Cover price on this is $4.99. I'm grabbing cover A. That's the only DC comic on the pull list this week. It's going to cost me $5 now. All right, so now let's see what's going on at the House of Ideas. There are only two books on the Marvel pull list this week, starting off with NYX, issue number one. NYX, written by Colin Kelly and Jackson Lansing, um, with art by Francesco Mortorino. If not familiar with Mortorino's art, I've seen a couple of Kelly and Lansing's books. I know they write like everything but somehow i've never read one of their books i think i read some of their captain america but anyway they're a writing duo they're all the rage people love their books so i'm excited to see what they bring uh now i told you guys i was basically only going to grab the core x-men titles this one i'm intrigued by because it's about mutants in new york uh we got miss marvel or excuse me miss M what is her name yeah miss marvel Sorry, too many Marvels. Captain Marvel, America Chavez, which is not a Captain Marvel. The point is, Ms. Marvel has been revealed to be a mutant. And so now she's in New York. Of course, you got Laura Kinney Wolverine, who's also in New York. And a bunch of other people that I'm not crazy familiar with. Uh, and one of the Cuckoos, uh, also in New York. So they're navigating life in their respective boroughs. And I'm just excited to see what that looks like. Because it sounds like it's going to be more street level even though we have like these big mutant powers so that's why i'm curious about this don't know if i'm going to end up sticking with it but we'll see what happens cover price on it is 4.99 and last up on the pull list this week is ultimate black panther issue number six now as far as the ultimate universe is concerned all of these books are neck and neck i feel like ultimate spider-man and ultimate black panther are my two favorites ultimate x-men is not that far behind and Spider-Man and Black Panther kind of flip-flop. It's hard to know, like, like week to week, one's more exciting than the other, or they flip-flop. Anyway, is my point. But uh, Ultimate Black Panther probably is edging out Spider-Man 
as my favorite as of issue five, because with issue five, the, the complaint that I've seen about Ultimate Black Panther and that I've even had myself is that it doesn't feel different enough. We've got all of the same characters that we know and love, some of them playing slightly different roles than we're used to. But the story overall feels really familiar. Wakanda is kind of separated from the rest of the world. Something is drawing them back into action. All right, how's T'Challa going to bring Wakanda out of seclusion into the public sphere? And how is he going to navigate that? We've seen that before. That was the whole basis of MCU T'Challa. But in issue five, we learn that the outside world doesn't just want to mine Wakanda for its vibranium. But there's another resource that we know nothing about, and we're discovering what that is and what Ra and Khonshu's plans are with it. The last issue definitely ended on a cliffhanger. I'm excited to get into this issue. By the way, the first trade paperback is on FOC this weekend, so grab that. I think today's the last day to pre-order that at your LCS. That'll collect the first four issues, then you just need five and six to get to where we are today. I'm excited about number six to see exactly what what the plans are for uh, Ra and Khonshu and see like what how they're being active uh, in the Makers Council, because we've not really seen what the Makers up to in any of the ultimate stuff. So anyway, cover price on Ultimate Black Panther issue six, written by Brian Edward Hill with art by Stefano Caselli is four ninety nine. I'm grabbing cover A and that's it. That's the only Oh, those are the two books on the Marvel pull list. Those are going to cost me $10 this week and we are done. And uh, I somehow stayed under budget with a grand total of just $48 this week. That's before tax and my 10% subscriber discount. So it's going to equal about $43, $44, which is great for me. Which means I could probably afford one more book. And there's a lot. There's a lot out there that's possibly on the radar some of these I'm not pro- crazy excited about, but they're definitely number ones that you should be looking at. So so there's a lot of new number ones on the radar this week. I'm going to kind of just run through them super quick. We got Berserker, A Face Full of Bullets. Looks like it's a one shot from Jason Aaron and Salvador La Roca. Uh, cover price on this $9.99. Kind of expensive. Can't lie. I'm surprised Berserker's still going on. I thought it was a fad back during the pandemic, but Still going strong. Shout out to Keanu Reeves. Uh, Spawn kills every spawn. Issue number one. It's a five issue miniseries with that cute little chibi spawn killing all the rest of the hell spawns. And it's only $2.99. So that's dope. Uh, Supermassive, number one. They've been doing these one shots for the last three years. The big Supermassive to get you into the massive verse. Radiant Black, Radiant Pink, Radiant Red, Rogue Sun, No One. I fell off of the Radiant Wagon. A while ago, maybe this is the chance to get back in. Cover price on is just five ninety nine. Uh, from Oni Press is Epitaphs from the Abyss, issue number one. This is an anthology series. They are bringing back EC Comics. This obviously falling in the EC horror line, so I'm gonna skip it. But the creative team on it, it's crazy. Stephanie Phillips, Jorge Fornes, like just. Amazing creators on that book. So if you're into horror, that's probably one to look out for. I'm going to save my ducats for the uh, Cruel Universe issue coming out next month. That's more in the sci-fi vein. But $4.99 for that. Uh, Speaking of horror, Nice House by the Sea out this week. James Tynan. Uh, If you like Nice House on the Lake, this is the sequel. So check it out for $4.99. And last thing out on the radar that I think you should probably skip, honestly. Marvel Zero, issue number one. Marvel Zero. This is straight up a reprint of the two free comic book day issues we got a couple months ago. All the stuff that it's teasing is already out. So just buy the stuff that it was teasing, unless you just want one of these cool foil covers. But $6.99 for books that were free two months ago, probably not the move. But anyway, that's all the stuff that was on the radar this week. Let me know what you're grabbing, and I'll see you guys in another video real soon. Till then, stay safe, stay awesome, and read something dope today. Peace.